This video is part of a series of presentations covering the key concepts of virtualization and its applications to cloud computing. This specific presentation covers concepts of hypervisors. It presents the motivation and key applications of virtualization. Virtual machines are conceptual computers. These are virtual computers, that means they are not actually physically present, but they do run on top of a physical or a real computer. The virtual machines provide an abstraction of a complete compute environment. So this includes CPU, memory, input-output devices, networking hardware, keyboard, mice, or whatever hardware that you want to emulate. These virtual machines come as an entire package that can be used to run a completely different operating system and run different programs on top of that virtual machine. Hypervisors are software that are used to create and run virtual machines. So if you think of a virtual machine as a Microsoft Word document, hypervisor is synonymous to Microsoft Word that enables you to edit and update those Word documents. Same way, virtual machines are managed, created, and run by the hypervisor software. There are two types of hypervisors. First one is type 1 hypervisor, which runs directly on the hardware. So you can think of type 1 hypervisor as the native operating system, and its only job is to run other guest operating systems. Commonly, type 2 hypervisors are used, particularly on desktop environments, and type 2 hypervisors are essentially programs like any other program, but their job is to run create and run a virtual machine. Let's look at these two hypervisors in a little bit more detail. Type 1 hypervisors run directly on the underlying hardware. In the industry lingo is they run on bare metal, where metal refers to the metal enclosures that are used on computers. So type 1 hypervisors can be thought of as the native operating system that actually run on top of the computer. Type 1 hypervisors do not provide a lot of the generic system calls that a common desktop operating system might provide. This is because the primary job of a Type 1 hypervisor is to run other operating systems called the guest operating systems in virtual machines. So Type 1 hypervisors are predominantly focused on creation and running of virtual machines. You would typically not run web browsers or desktop applications on top of a Type 1 hypervisor. Instead, those applications will run inside a guest operating system that is running on top of the Type 1 hypervisor. Many cloud computing infrastructures and such use this type of Type 1 hypervisor. Some of the common examples are Zen, which is a free and open source uh, Type 1 hypervisor. Uh, a lot of the enterprises will also use VMware, which is also a Type 1 hypervisor. The Type 2 hypervisor is different than a Type 1 hypervisor in that it runs within a operating system. So Type 2 hypervisor will be something you would typically run on top of Windows, Mac, or Linux desktops. So these Type 2 hypervisors run similar to any other standard program on your computer. You double-click them, they start running. So that's about it, how you launch a Type 2 hypervisor. A lot of these Type 2 hypervisors also provide a graphical user interface or a GUI that enables you to easily click buttons and set up uh, new guest operating systems and run them. These types of hypervisors are usually used on desktops. Sometimes they're also used on servers, but most commonly used on desktop environments. Some of the examples include QEMU. We'll do a deeper dive into QEMU soon. And also VirtualBox, which is from Oracle, and it's a very popular Type 2 hypervisor. Here's an example of VirtualBox, which is a Type 2 hypervisor from Oracle. So basically, you double-click, it starts running. You can configure and set up different operating systems, and you click the Start button. Basically, the Type 2 hypervisor starts, and the Windows operating system essentially starts booting on top of it. Here's an example of QEMU. This is one that does not have a GUI, so you can run it at the Linux command prompt. Here, it's booting up a Linux kernel, and you can see the kernel booting up. Once the kernel is booting up, it starts the networking, and then the console is active. Notice that you will be root on, on the virtual machine, not on the host, but on the virtual machine. And you can run whatever commands, and then 
you can reboot the machine. When you reboot it, your hypervisor stops. We will do a deeper dive on working with QEMU in another presentation in this series. Now let's look at the motivations for virtualization and use for hypervisors. The first scenario where virtual machines are often used is called server consolidation. The real source or the problem that the server consolidation is trying to address is that most of the physical servers that we often have are underutilized in data centers. Underutilized hardware wastes energy because it's still working. You still have to keep it running so that it can take on new load, but it's not fully used, so it wastes energy. And also, you have these servers sitting, not use, running useful jobs, so you have reduced return on investments due to these idling resources. So for example, you can run the uptime command on a Linux server, and it'll show you how much time it's been up and what has been the load averages for a while. Ideally, for example, this machine is a four core machine. So you would see, ideally on a fully utilized server, you would see something like 3.9, 3.8, well over three. But here you see fractional values clearly indicating that the load, that means the CPUs are idling and they are not being effectively used. So this is an example of a server that is not being full, that is underutilized and it's kind of wasting energy and you're not getting the return on investment that you have on this machine. So the solution is to run many virtual machines on a single server. So rather than just running one machine, one virtual machine or one program, you can run virtual machines for multiple users on this single server so that you improve the utilization of the server and improve the return on investment. So by consolidating multiple virtual machines onto a single server, you reduce the overall hardware cost. So now instead of buying separate machines to run each one of these operating systems, you can run multiple operating systems on a single machine, thereby reducing cost of hardware. You increase energy efficiency because now that the hardware is running, you're effectively utilizing the energy that is being consumed by the machine to do some useful work. So that means you have improved energy efficiency. You have reduced maintenance now because earlier you would have created, say, if you had eight users, each one would have their own machine. So you have to maintain eight different, uh, physically maintain eight different servers. But now that you have consolidated those as virtual machines onto a single server, now you have to maintain only one server and not eight different servers. And it also gives improved fault tolerance. These virtual machines are just software uh, configurations. So when a virtual machine is turned off, it is basically stored on disk. So if a machine fails or if you have some issues, you can just copy those files to another machine, another server, and start up the virtual machine there. So you're not tied to a single server, a single physical box, and these virtual machines can seamlessly move to other machines on the, in a data center. So it enables, gives you a level of fault tolerance. So even if hardware fails, you can move and migrate these virtual machines to other servers where it can run. Let's look at the second scenario, which is desktop virtualization. A key issue with desktop virtualization that it's trying to solve is the availability of software. A lot of users might need different operating systems. So for example, if you're doing mobile development, you may want to run uh, the software to emulate different types of hardware for your smartphones, different devices. Sometimes you may also have embedded devices that you want to run. So you might need different types of hardware or different types of software in order to run, test, develop all of the different programs that you're working on. And Another important aspect is some of the software might require very different types of uh, platforms. So for example, some software might work only on Windows, some software might only work on Mac, some software might only work on Linux. So rather than having multiple platforms with multiple uh, configurations, it's much easier to have multiple virtual machines that you can start and stop anytime you want and gives you effective use of your resources and makes different types of software readily available. And this is also important when you want to maintain legacy software to run on diff older generations of computers or older generations of operating systems as well. 
So here the solution is to use a hypervisor like QEMU or VirtualBox. Uh, QEMU also does what's known as binary translation. That means it can emulate different hardware and CPU, so it makes life a lot easier. And these uh, hypervisors can emulate different types of CPU or devices, so it's easy for you to develop and test your software. And of course, on a desktop with virtualization, you can run different operating systems simultaneously. So you can, just by moving your mouse from one window to another, you can go from Mac to Windows to Linux seamlessly with these virtual machines. So it makes the overall desktop experience and the desktop um, and the issues of software development, it streamlines a lot of those issues. The third motivation for using virtual machines is for security and testing. So here the key problem is how do we test or safely use untrusted software? That means these are just software that you might be downloading from the internet or if you're running in a high security um, infrastructure like a power plant or a water distribution system, you want to ensure that you're getting safe and secure software. So the question is, how do you safely test, uh, trust and test these complex software and operating systems for use in cr mission critical infrastructures? Keep in mind, of course, the software that you might download from the internet could have malware or viruses. Uh, so the key question is, how do you test and troubleshoot these malicious software? So for example, how do you reverse engineer a, a virus so you can protect your organization from it? You know, you guys have different viruses and worms that are running around. How would you test and analyze these types of malicious software? And virtual machines come in handy there. So here the solution is to run this malicious software and such in isolated virtual machines. By default, virtual machines tend to be heavily isolated, so it's easy to run the software inside this isolated environment. And the isolation can help you contain and restrict the malicious software. So whatever um, malicious operation the software may be doing will affect only the virtual machine that you can easily discard and will not affect rest of your computing infrastructure. Uh, and of course, these virtual machines, you can turn on more detailed logging so you, it might be able to troubleshoot and also inspect this malicious software and test software in uh, different situations, particularly if you want to do what is a disaster testing. That means you want to test when something fails. So it's much easier to make something fail in a virtual machine than on a physical machine. And you can also transparently enable some of the storage and such for these virtual machines. And if anything goes wrong in the virtual machine, uh, you can always roll back the virtual machine disks and recover data on these disks and so on and so forth. So it's much easier to do security and testing. All right, let's summarize what we reviewed in this presentation. So we started with the concept of hypervisors, which are software that are used to create and run virtual machines. Um, we looked at type one hypervisors that directly run on hardware. So it can be thought of as an operating system to run other operating systems. Type two hypervisors run as standalone processes. These are like standard programs that run on a, a machine and they help to run other operating systems inside the hypervisor. And the hypervisor is the one that creates the virtual machines and virtual machines are conceptual machines with all of the CPU, storage, network, and other devices associated with them. We looked at three reasons of why virtualization is widely used these days. First one is server consolidation. This is to enable efficient and effective use of hardware resources. The second one is desktop virtualization, which enables us to run multiple operating systems for software development, testing, and other regular software maintenance activities. And of course, the third and important one is security and testing, where we can run malicious or suspicious software inside a virtual machine, and that protects rest of the infrastructure from any malicious activity that the software might try.